at Wild Willow Farm with our prototype solar oven for development for refugee camps initially in Chad for uh, Darfur refugees but potentially for application elsewhere in Africa and the rest of the world. We've been working on this design since September. The idea was to use local materials that would be available in Chad to make a robust oven. We've been working here in San Diego uh, to determine how best we could do that. We've been using local resources that are similar to those in Chad and we've been exper experimenting with different aspects of this particular design. Where we are now is realizing where we need to fine tune it. We've been able to get this particular oven up to 250 degrees, but our goal is 350 degrees in order to really match other available ovens. We want ours to perform as well as others that are out there, but be more robust and less expensive to build in Chad and elsewhere. Initially, we had a mirrored surface attached to this upper frame but we realized that that really wasn't sufficient. It wasn't giving us enough sunlight. So we've got a new design here based on some of the existing models that are out there that we think is gonna be more effective. So we've been testing this, this model here, which will allow much more sunlight to come into the oven. And an advantage here is that, as you can see, this can come off so that we can actually put this away when it's no longer needed. So our next phase of development, we want to adjust the interior of the oven to make it a little bit tighter and smaller because we're finding that this is a bit bigger than we need it to be and we're actually finding that we can get more efficiency out of the smaller space. Right now in Chad, the traditional cooking pot is a 12 inch diameter pot. We want our oven to fit two of those. So the dimensions will be around the exact uh, dimensions of those pots so that they just barely fit. They're nice and snug. That will take advantage of the heat that goes into that oven the best. This is the frame that we are using for the, the clear part, which will allow the sun to come into the oven itself. This part is made out of polycarbonate, which is a very thin, flexible plastic that we can easily ship to the camps. The material, if it's shipped, is very minimal. It's very small, lightweight, easy to pull up on a pack pallet. And when the refugees can go home, they can easily disassemble this device, take the, the material that's really important to have, wrap it up into a, a bundle like this, and bring it home with them. Right now we're facing south, so the sun is coming from this direction. In the morning the sun will be coming from this direction. During the, the, the hottest part of the day, the sun will be coming right here. Here in San Diego, we are, we are at 32 degrees latitude. So what that means is to get the most efficient solar oven, we need to tilt our window so at 32 degrees. This first layer here is just our base layer of sand and clay and straw. As we go up, we're going to be adding more clay to the mixture so it's harder and tougher. One of the interesting things about solar ovens is they get hot and they bake food, but it doesn't get up to that ignition temperature. So the nice thing about that 
is we can use materials that would otherwise get burnt in this oven, including what we're going to be using for the door, which is our insulated pillow that we've made here. The nice thing about this is that it will allow us to just stuff this into the opening so it's very low tech. The only thing they need actually is this fabric. In this case, we're stuffing it with straw to provide insulation and to also reflect the extra heat, we've added a bit of the mylar on the inside. So this will face the inside of the oven, will reflect most of the heat that's being brought in by the sun back into the oven. This then becomes just a very easy thing to just kind of close up the opening, pull out again. Again, very easy to make, very easy to transport, something that can um, be made with local materials and should work very well for our purposes. We're using this as our form for making our door. So this will go right here and we're going to build our cob over this so it'll make a round hole. So then this is our door will go right in there. So this is allowing us to make a, a nice round door using what we have around here. So we're going to go about this high with the cob and then it's going to slope down to about here. Today is our second day of building, so this is how far we got yesterday. The material is still kind of wet. We're going to install the frame for the glass, and then we'll be able to adjust the cob to really be perfect in regards to that frame. Then we'll just keep refining it today, and then let it dry over the next few days. When it rains, the water will flow down off of the frame, but it, then it'll, instead of landing on the cob here and wearing it away, it'll go on this, which has a bit of an overhang and which will allow any excess water to drip off. We have our frame ready, and you can see we have put screws in the underside here, and what that's going to do is allow for the frame to adhere into the cob. The cob is still soft, so we can just pretty much squish it right in there. We're looking at making this mirrored surface a little bit bigger as well. This frame will be removed as we don't need, need it anymore. So that our next phase is to actually make what we see here that much better, more refined, easy to build, and to get us up to our magic 350 degrees. <laughs> 